Hi there. If, like me, you like using past papers to do your revision, then you may, I'm afraid, have to see this introduction quite a few times. Um, but the whole point of past papers is it helps you hone the kinds of questions you're going to have in an exam. Um, so it puts the mass in the context that you're going to need to do it. A lot of students I've taught over the years have known what maths to do, but come unstuck in the exams because they're not quite sure what maths they're being asked for. So throughout these videos, what I want you to do is pause it, have a really good go at the question, and then mark it going through um, looking at my explanation in detail. If you've got it totally right, then just give it a tick and you can move on to the next bit, and that's great. Uh, you may want to have a, a look around the internet and search out for the exact copy so you can print it off and go from there. But there's very few questions that actually need you to have um, the scaled drawing or, or whatever there. Most of it you don't need to. Um, and you can get the top grade, whether you're doing the higher paper or the foundation paper, uh, just by honing all the skills that don't need that. Right, the paper we're looking at today actually goes by two different names. Confusingly, because of COVID, this is the paper series that should have been sat in the summer of 2020, but that never happened. So actually, this one is from November 2020, when they had the resets is when it got used. So if you wanted to print the sheets off, uh, finding a PDF or something online, then either November or May 2020 should do you. This here is the grade boundaries for the paper. So it's out of 80. If you get 55 or above, that's enough. For the top grade, you can get a grade 5. 45 for a 4, and so on. Right, question 1. In order of size, to do this, I recommend, if you get at all confused, making sure you've got the same number of digits after the decimal point in each one. Then, although the numbers are 0 0.4 and 0 0.35, you can think of it as 0.400, if, if that helps. So looking across there, I can see that the smallest number must be the 309. So 0 0.309, then 320 but I'm just going to write it 0 0.32, and then 0 0.35, and then 0 0.400, just written as 0 0.4. Here's the next two questions. Give these a go. From the list, writing down a multiple of three. So three is the only one that's in the three times table because six times three is 18 is 18. And correct the nearest whole number. What I'd normally do is put a box around the whole number and then look at that, the next digit. That next digit is a 5 or bigger because it's a 6, so that means it rounds up to 5. Okay, give question 4 and 5 a go. So 3 quarters of a decimal. You may know this off the top of your head, but if not, uh, this is a non-calculated paper, so three quarters means three divided by four. So four doesn't go into three. So if I had three pounds, I was trying to share it out, I'd have to get that three changed into, if I got three pounds changed into ten pences, I'd have 30 ten p pieces. Four into 30 goes seven times four is 28, and two more to make up to 30. So they get changed down to pennies, if you like. 4 into 20 goes 5 times, giving us 0 0.75. Now, this is an interesting one. When it says write down the value of the 7, if you write hundreds, you might not get the mark if the mark is feeling... I mean, the actual value of that, you should be saying as 700. You can do it in words, if you like, but 700 like that is 5. get this. Right, so the probability that it will land on a C, well, half of the
the spinner is made up of C's, isn't it? Four out of eight. So it's a 50-50 or, or half chance. So the cross needs to go on the scale there. For the second one, probability it will have a D. Well, there aren't any Ds, so it can't happen. It's impossible. If anything is impossible, it goes there. And certain is one. You can't have more than one on the probability. Right, so a pictogram is a little bit like a bar chart, but a bit simpler in a way. But we need a key. They're telling us that they've, they've done the part for, uh, for Monday. We've got 18 eggs, and we've got one, two, three, four parts there, five, six altogether. Well, 18 divided by six is three eggs for each quarter. So if there's three for each quarter, three, six, nine, twelve eggs will be that. So you need to write that that means twelve eggs sold. So that gets you one mark, the key. Then we need twenty-four eggs. Now twenty-four divided. Question 8 begins with coordinates of A. Remember to go along the corridor first, so it's your X value followed by your Y value, same as in the alphabet, so then 3 up to there. Part B, coordinates of B. That is 0 for the X, negative 1 for the Y. And then there's a final part for this on the grid, mark a cross with the point negative 2, 1. So hopefully you've got that just up to there, a little cross there, and a C. So question 9. You've got three red counters to four blue counters. So altogether you've got seven counters. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 3 out of those 7 are red, so it's 3 sevenths. Write the ratio in 12 to 13 to form 1 to n. Well, what that means is we've got to divide them both by 12 because we just want 1 here, and that's the ratio is all about dividing. And if you want to get divide anything by a number to get to 1, you've got to divide it by itself. So one, 12 divided by 12 is 1. 30 divided by 12. So if we think about our 12 times table. 12 doesn't go into 3, so I'm going to ignore that. Let's do 12 into 30, which goes exactly, well, it goes twice. But that makes 24. You've got 6 remainder. So that 6 remainder needs to go over onto there. And then we do 12 into 60. But if you go through your 12s after, you can't see it here, but there's four marks for question 10. And on the answer bit, it actually says dot, 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 and grams. So as long as you put your thing there, there's not a mark for having it in grams. But that's what it's about. Pause the video and have a really good think and try and get into it. It's much better if you make a get it wrong, you will learn more from it.
Right, so if a quarter are large and the rest are small, then 12 divided by 4 equals 3 large. The rest are small, so 12 take 3 equals 9 small. We want the total weight. Each large marble is 70. So 70 times 3, well, 3 sevens are 21, so that's 210 grams. And then we've also got 50 times 9. Well, 9 fives are 45, so that's 450. Then if we add those together, 450 and 210, we get 660 grams. Question 11, reflect the shaded shape in the mirror line. So what we need to do is, when you reflect, light travels at the shortest distance possible. So it will go at right angles to the mirror line. So going at right angles, one, two to there, one, two the other side of the mirror line. From here, one, two, three, four to the mirror line, one, two, three, four. Going one further there, that's going straight down, isn't it? So that's giving me something that looks like that. Okay, now you're going to get one mark if you've got at least two of the points in the right place, or if you've got the right, sh it looking right, but it's shifted one over to one side or another. As long as you've reflected that, get one. It's got to be in exactly the right place like that for two. Right, so question part B on this one is actually worth two marks, by the way, so give it a go. So when the input is seven, seven goes in, and you do seven times two, which is 14. And then the 14 goes into here. Take three, gets you 11, so we should have 11 there. Find the input when the output is 41. So we're going to have to reverse this. So the output is 41. So what number take three? Well, going the other way, we reverse taking three by adding it would get you 44, because 44 take three is 41. And then to reverse it being multiplied by two, we need to divide it by two, which would get us to 22. So 22 gets you two marks, because you're having to reverse it a little bit more complicated. As long as you've attempted to do any of those things, you could get one for that. To do this question, you can only really do it if you've got a printout of what's going on. So if not, you might just need to watch. But otherwise, if you have got a printout, you're doing the bearing of it. And then we've got to work out the real distance between A and B, giving our answer in kilometres, because it says it's drawn accurately in the scale of 1 to 25,000. So the first thing, to find the bearing, I'm going to begin by drawing a line from A to B because it's talking about what angle do we need to draw on. All bearings are measured from north in a clockwise direction, and they have to have three digits, which we'll talk about in a moment. So get this the right way up, first of all, and put the center of my protractor on the cross there, and then make sure that the line with the N is going through the zero. And then we're going from the zero, so going clockwise is always easier on these, and that looks like it's at exactly 25 degrees. But bearings, just 25 degrees wouldn't get me the mark because bearings all have three digits in them. It's something to do with them being clearer when they're done on the, over on the radio because they're used in the army and things like that. Say so I'm on bearing 025. If you've heard three numbers clearly, then you know you don't need to ask them again. Right, working out the real distance between A and B with a scale of 1 to 25,000. First thing to do is to measure it in centimetres. And it is exactly 5 centimetres. So we've got 5 centimetres that we need to multiply by 25,000. So I know that 5 times 25 equals can work that out to be 125 because 425s are 100. So 
This is going to give me 125 with one, two, three zeros on it. But that's centimetres. I want it in kilometres. If I divide by 100, that will give me 1250, taking off those two zeros, metres. But then there's a hundred, a thousand metres in a kilometre. So then I need to divide that number by a thousand, and that would move the digits one, two, three places to give me 1.25 kilometres. Right, now you've got a uh, question 14, a three mark two way table. Take your time. Right, so we're told that 11 of the 20 female students, have so put 20 female students as a total in there, said swimming. We're also told there's 30 students altogether, which is why there's a 30 in there. Then what were we told? Two of the male students said tennis. So that's just a two there. And five students said cricket. Well, that could be male, could be female, so we've got to assume that that's all of the students who like cricket. Now, the number of male students who said cricket was the same as the number of male students who said swimming. So these two numbers here are going to be the same. We need to know what they all add up to, don't we? And we can work that out because if we had 20 female students but 30 altogether, 30 take 20 is 10, isn't it? So there must be 10 male students. Now if I take two away from 10, that leaves me with eight. So that eight needs to be split equally for cricket and swimming. Now we've done that, there should always be somewhere where there's only one in the line. So four liking cricket who are male, but five altogether must be one female there. Four males and 11 females liking swimming adds up to make 15. Then what have we got here? We've got 1 plus 11 makes 12 females. Altogether we've got 20, so 12 plus 8 is 20, and then 2 add 8 is 10. You should always double check to see that this line here, which we haven't considered yet, also works. 5 add 10 is 15, add 15 is 30. It does, so we can be really confident we've got it right. Right, so Gemma's making a drink. Um, one part of orange squash to nine parts of water. So I'm just going to start by doing one to nine. Um, he used 750 millilitres of orange squash. So he's got one part of 750. The water is going to need to be nine times 750. Uh, so... All together, that's going to give me nine lots of 750 and another lot of 750, which makes 10, doesn't it? I think the easiest thing to do would just be 10 times 750 is 7,500. You could do nine times 7, 5, 750 is 6,750 and then add that to it. But that's how many millilitres we're going to have. Now, one litre is 1,000 millilitres so therefore that's going to be 7.5 litres and we need to know the greatest number of one litre bottles that Jamil can completely fill well he can fill more than seven but he can't fill as many as eight so it's going to be seven bottles as our final answer at three marks S Okay, question 16 then. Uh, pause this one and give it a go. Explain why it's not possible for the median to be 5. Now, if you look at it, this means we've got 1, 0. We've got 3, 1s. We've got 5, 2s. Because what a frequency table is telling you is how many of each thing that you've got. We've got 4, 3s. 2, 3, 4. And we've got three, fours. So the explanation is uh, all the data is smaller 
than five. So there aren't any fives. It's impossible for a five to be the median. Right, then, if I just move it down here, this is what it says. So we've got to find her mistake. She's trying to working out the total number of points scored by the 16 students in the game. So before answering that, I'm going to have a little look at working that out. So the total number of points is going to be the frequency times the number there. So the number times the frequency, I'm going to do that here. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 3 is 3. It's what all of these add up to, isn't it? We've then got five twos, which makes ten. We've got four threes, which make twelve, and we've got three fours, which also make twelve. And then if we add those up, thirteen plus another twenty-five is thirty-seven. So that gets us to thirty-seven. Ah, we're one different. So what's the mistake that she's made? Ah, it's here. So 0 times 1 equals 0, not 1, is Tina's mistake. And that's that. It's only one mark for this describing thing. A lot of people leave these um, blank, and quite often just, just write whatever you think might be have a chance, and very often it's right. Question 17, the last one for part one of the video. Um, take your time, five marks, see what you can get. So, on Monday, the normal price of the TV has a normal price of £500. On Monday, the normal price is reduced by one-tenth. Well, 500 divided by 10 is 50. 500 take 50 is £450 is what it costs on Monday. Then it says on Tuesday the sale price of the TV is reduced by 20%. So 10% of 450 is 450 divided by 10 is 45. So 20% equals 2 times 45 which is £90, so we're going to reduce it by another £90. So 450 take 90 is, take from there, 9 from, sorry, 9, 5, 9 from 15 is 6, so it's £360 left. He's got £400 to spend on the TV, so... Yes, Chris has enough. But to get full, if you just write yes, Chris has enough with no working, you get no marks. You'll get one mark for working out the 50, and you'll get another mark for working out 450 pounds on Monday will be two marks. Then for working out 20%, you'll get a third mark as 90 pounds. For working out that it's gonna cost 360, you'll have four, and then you get your fifth mark for saying yes, Chris has got enough. All right, that's it for this video. Um, load up the next video when you're ready to have a go at question 18 onwards.